Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy. Welcome, fellow YouTubers, to another Auto Hockey slash GPT3 video. I've done a few videos if you want to watch them about Chat GTP, but this is going to be my first one. I've been trying to work with this for the last few weeks, but I'm finally getting to it. And what we're doing here is we're going to be using Chat GPT with Auto Hockey's. And it's really cool. It's a great way to add the ability of ChatGPT into pretty much any program you want. I'm talking, you know, we'll, we'll use uh, probably this uh, Notepad++ uh, for our program that we're going to be using. But you can use it in, you know, Chrome, uh, text editor, Word document, emails, whatever you want to each his own and yeah let's jump in a lot of this code i will not be explaining i have other videos talking about some of this stuff and a lot of this is just stuff that you're not even going to really bother with um so i'm going to kind of skip over here down to this part uh this all code right here was originally written by i don't i'm probably gonna butcher this but uh h tadashi i'm guessing is how you pronounce it I don't know, uh, but this is his GitHub. It's really cool, very simple stuff. Um, when you download it, you just click on the little uh, green orange thing here, or orange, <laughs> green button thing here, and push download zip and extract it to wherever you want. It's just a few files in a folder here, and it's pretty easy. It has a little video here kind of uh, showing it in action, not 100% explaining the code though, which is why I'm doing that. And uh, he has... Uh, the instructions right here also and uh, how to use so yeah uh, so shout out to him great code this was really cool to find and then over here it looks like he's using uh, some st uh, code in libraries uh, he's using the cjson hk by everybody probably knows geek dude for the most part unless you're new to hk in which case you will learn his name or username at least <laughs> and then the win HTTP request uh, comes from this reddit link which is a his username is anonymous. Uh, I always probably get this wrong, but 1184, I believe, is what it is. He's really intelligent with this kind of stuff, so great script there that uh, definitely brought this all together, it seems. And yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll put a link to uh, his GitHub and stuff like that that you'll need in the description below. So we got single instance here. That's just something you put in most scripts. Usually I'm not going to explain that. That's just saying only run one version of the script. If you try to launch it a second time, it's going to say, hey, you're already running this. Are you sure you want to run it again? In which case, it'll close the old one, open the new one in case you make any changes. Uh, so here's really the only place uh, you're going to really be messing with. So this is the hotkey used to complete prompts. Uh, so that's just a variable name. And here I'm using F1 in his GitHub. He was using uh, the window key and O, I believe it was. Uh, for some odd reason, I was having issues with that. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just my computer or something weird. But I was having issues with using the window key in auto hotkeys for some odd reason. That might just be something weird with my uh, computer and keyboard at the moment. Never had that issue before, but with this for some reason. So I switched it to F1. But that's a good thing to show you because you can obviously change it to whatever you want. You could put, uh, you know, control. If you don't know, control is the up caret uh, A. So now if I were to delete that F1 part, but I do control A, then the code would run. So you can change that to whatever you want. And then my second hotkey is F2. And this is for a input box uh, where you can do uh, expansion on the answer, I guess you could say. Now down here, we just got uh, some information. You might want to change this to max tokens. If you don't know what that means, is for certain types of usage in chat GP, uh, chat GPT, I'm always getting those letters mixed up, is kind of like a monthly limit uh, saying like, hey, when I reach 200, stop, because sometimes you can be charged based on word count. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing. We're using the DaVinci uh, thing here um that should never change unless the three or one change for some odd reason which it could at some point i'm sure uh, so just know that in case you need um the other thing too uh so like i said a lot of this i'm not going through we got you know basic stuff that i've covered on videos setting up you know what the hotkeys uh go to for handler so the first time you run this uh it is going to check here for if not exist settings.ini so it is creating an INI file, 
And what that's doing is you need to save your IPI or API. So I can't talk today. API uh, key there. So how do you get that? Well, let's go ahead and do that now. Here's that input box. It's going to ask you, uh, please insert your open API key. You only have to do it once. It saves to an INI file. The only time you would need to change it is if for some reason you decide to use another one. Uh, another key or you just delete your old one and get a new one for some reason. Uh, but that will save automatically. Uh, if you do need to change that, just go to where the INI file saved, which it will be wherever your script is. And uh, you can change it in that text file there or .ini, but it will open up as like a text file that you're used to. If that file does exist, well, then it's going to read that API call. And then I added this where uh, line 39 here, I added message box ready to go just because I liked having that there, knowing that I'm good to go and it launched correctly and everything because there's times where I'll think I double click on a script and it actually doesn't run because I just didn't click it correctly. So I like adding this just so I know I did it correctly and I'm not sitting there waiting to, you know, go down to my bar and see if it's there. Lots of stuff going on here. This is our URL that we're using for our API. Um, I don't think that will really change unless the V1 here maybe changes uh, to something different later on. So that's always something to keep a lookout for. And obviously we got a bunch of like different things going on here. Some JSON, some, you know, redoing of the text and all that. Uh, same here. Here's another one with the uh, API uh, URL that you might have to change if you have to change it up there. Now down here, uh, it's going to save your clipboard. This is kind of a cool feature. You don't have to have it, but it's nice to have. If you have something in your clipboard, it's going to save what's in there because this information from the API call is going to go into your clipboard temporarily. Control Sin, Control X to cut out whatever you said, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but then at the end, it's going to put what it saved back into your clipboard so you won't lose anything that was in your clipboard it's just moving it somewhere different temporarily but then it's going to restore it basically so this is a really cool thing i put this in a lot of my scripts uh, where i'm doing different types of keyboard manipulation or need to transfer data using the clipboard it's a good way to get it back so that's always a cool thing uh, so yeah uh, basically down here you know you got sin right because your text is going to be highlighted it's going to send the right key to move the cursor to the end of the sentence or whatever you're asking, send space just to break it up, and then it's going to paste uh, whatever the response is that it got. Uh, change system cursor, uh, you know, this is basically just DLL calls. I've done videos on actually this specific thing with system cursor stuff, so you can always check out that video. So like I said, I'm not going through a lot of this uh, just because I've done videos, and this is more of a showcase slash reaction video kind of thing. All right let's do this do i have it running that is a great question i do not give me one second here uh on my messy desktop to find it uh where would it be uh, bear with me i oh here we are there we go i put it in a folder that's why i couldn't find it all right, we're going to go ahead and we'll launch the, it says auto hotkey script right here. We're going to go ahead and launch that. There's that message box I was talking about saying ready to go. I'm going to push OK. So we should be good to go. So let's go back to Notepad++. Like I said, I'm going to open a new one here. Let's give a few lines here. And uh, I don't know. Let's ask a question. What is auto hotkey? And you don't have to put a question mark, but you can. We're going to highlight our question here. We're going to press F1 or whatever hotkey you all decided to use uh, for your thing. So there's that cursor change that I was talking about where it does that, where it shows that it's thinking over top of this. And uh, let's see. Oh, there it goes. It's being a little slow there. Auto hockey is an open source scripting language. And yeah. It basically just kind of gave a quick description of what is auto hockey. I accidentally just deleted that part right there. But yeah, uh, I mean, you can ask it anything really. Uh, what day is today? So we're going to highlight that. Press F1. There's it said. Today's Friday. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, that is completely wrong. Today is Thursday <laughs> that I'm recording this video. 
like I said, ChatGPT is uh, it's not always correct. And <laughs> there's certain things it can and cannot do, but it's getting better over time. So that's kind of funny that that happened. So always double check what it gives you as an answer because it's probably not. Now this might be, maybe it is Friday on the other side of the world where this is like getting the information from. I don't know. But who knows? Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's how it is. You know, what is today? We're going to press F2, enter a instruction. Uh, what is today? We're going to push OK. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what just happened there. That was weird. Oh, it did restore that. It, all it did was paste my thing there and said file.txt. So I wonder, did it save a file somewhere? I don't see anything. Interesting. Very interesting. What is today? Tell me today. Why did you just cut that out? <laughs> okay, it worked kind of that time. What it, What day is today? Yes, any day. Okay. Interesting response. So there is certain things that it does pretty well, but then there's still stuff that it's lacking. You know, that's going to be with any AI. If you guys play with this, let me know what it does well and what it's having issues with as of the time of you using uh, this. Uh, you know, if stuff changes, I'll let you know in the comments below. And pennant. Yeah, if you guys use this, let me know what you struggled with in it getting, you know, just horrible answers. If they're funny, let me know. I would love to see some of the funny answers it might give that are completely ridiculous. Uh, but then also let me know, like, what did it do well? Like, you know, did it do math very well? But then it obviously sucks at time and, you know, dates and stuff. So, yeah, as always, hit that subscribe button. Oh, wait, before you do that, or do it now, actually. Uh, I forgot to mention how to get your API key that's going to be saved into the INI. So you're going to go to the website here. Um, uh, so you just go to, uh, you know, you go to the chat GPT, you go to your settings, and down here it says user API keys. You just click that, and it's pretty easy. As you can see, you can't see my full code here because uh, it hides it. Uh, I created it on the 6th. Last time I used it was on the 6th. Obviously, this will update soon to reflect today's date, the 9th. Uh, but if you want to create a new secret key, you just click Create New Secret Key. Something to remember here, and so it's a really long key here for your API. It gives you a warning here. Once you push OK here, you can't see it again. It's, it, it's hidden, even from yourself. You can never see it again. So push Copy here. It'll have that little thing saying that it did copy. And save it into like a text file if you need to, or put it straight into your code, because once you push OK, as you see, there's nothing I can do here to see it again. Now, obviously, you just saw my API, so I'm going to go ahead and say remove, and I'm going to delete that API key, and yeah, that's gone. That way you guys can't try to access my account like that and overuse my tokens. Um, but yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that. That's how you get that. And like I said, hit that subscribe button. I'm always doing automation videos, mostly on auto hockey every week, one or two videos. And hit that like button if you like this kind of stuff uh, with this specific topic. Let's me know which videos you want to see more of, which ones maybe I'll do a little bit less, that kind of thing. Or what route you want me to take as far as do you want to learn more about this specific topic in this direction or that direction. Helps me out because these videos are for you all. And I love you guys. See you all on the next one.